Today on Locked on Buckeyes, we dive into what we should expect from Kyle McCord tomorrow against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and why tomorrow's game is a big test for Ohio State's offensive line. You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back for the episode of Locked on Buckeyes for the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Friday, November 3rd in the year 2023. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. During today's episode, we will discuss why tomorrow's game against Rutgers is a big test for Ohio State's offensive line. And is tomorrow a trap game? We answer that question later in today's show. But first, Kyle McCord. Every single week, he's going to be the talk of the town because he's QB1 at Ohio State. After last week's performance, had multiple interceptions, had a fumble as well that really showed people and made people think what we're seeing from Accord might not be sustainable or what we want to see from our QB1 in 2023. Regardless of who the opposition is, if you have multiple interceptions and a fumble in a game, it's not good. It doesn't matter if you're the Buckeyes, if you're the Scarlet Knights, whoever you are, it doesn't matter if those numbers are a part of your stat sheet at the end of the game. But that was one game. I have seen comparisons to Ohio State in this season, Combo Court's eighth start versus C.J. Stroud's eighth start in the year where he he was a full-time starter. It's not the same thing because Stroud missed a game early, but there was really no doubt in any game that Stroud was going to be pulled from a cord in 2021. This year, we knew going into the season, Kyle McCord's going to start the game week one, ended up learning later he would start week two, but was not named the full-time starter until week number three. So the comparison between those two is a little bit different. But for Kyle McCord tomorrow against Rutgers, and I don't want to go through the numbers, the season stats, the averages, things like that. But I think Ohio State should expect some of the same you've seen from him so far this year. Through the first eight games of the season, we have seen enough in a big enough sample size to really know what the offense is, what the defense is, what Ohio State brings to the table week in and week out. And with that in mind, I think for Kyle McCord tomorrow, Should you expect a slow start? Yes. Now, I'm not saying you should expect turnovers and interceptions and um, poor ball security. I shouldn't. I'm not going to go that far. Those are things that can be corrected, can be fixed. But also, I think you should kind of expect Kyle McCord to kind of have some of the same play that he has had this season. Now, realistically, I think that it would be nice that or eventually if the offense didn't have slow starts. Any emergence of a running game, you would think that would help the quarterback ease into the swing of things and make some easier throws and kind of throw the defense for a loop because now they have to worry about the running back getting loose in the backfield. But also at the t- same time, they have to realize and worry about, hmm, is this what is uh, going to happen? Is this going to be the norm for the offense, a more balanced attack from Ohio State? I don't know. It'd be nice. It would be nice if we had the answer to those questions, but we don't have them right now. The answer to the questions that we have is that Kyle McCord is a good quarterback. We know that. Now, he's not elite. He is a good quarterback. One, another question that people have have wondered, can Kyle McCord make all the throws? He can make all the throws. And as we heard Greg Petuto yesterday during yesterday's preview Thursday episode, previewing tomorrow's game against Rutgers, if you did not catch that show, definitely go check that out. It's on YouTube and it's also on any audio podcast platform that you choose. Greg Petuto Petuto discussed how the secondary hasn't really been the best. Um, They have struggled. That was good as some of the numbers are for Rutgers right now and for the season that Rutgers has had. There are still some struggles on the defensive side of the ball for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. 
And with that in mind, I do think McCord, he can get loose a little bit. I don't want to go over some numbers here really quickly, but he can get loose. He can throw the ball, and he can get comfortable. The one question mark I have about Kyle McCord is how healthy is he? Knowing that he got banged up against Notre Dame, knowing that that injury got re-aggravated or aggravated once again a week ago against Wisconsin, how healthy is he? Does Ohio State need to pull interest in Jebbia, the uh, Oregon State transfer? Maybe. I don't know. He has five starts under his belt at a previous school. Does that turn into six? Uh, not Maybe I don't say six starts. I think Kyle, of course, started tomorrow. But does it turn into him playing his first game as a Buckeye and for an extended period of time this season? I don't know. I, I, I don't think that's what anybody wants to happen. But I don't know. Devin Brown is still hurt getting back on the practice field. And the expectation is for Devin Brown to be back. But still, there's a drop-off from McCord to Brown. This is what you got. He's your QB1. He's a good quarterback. But I do think, though, this is just my hunch. Over the next four games, starting tomorrow, we're going to get a better idea of how good Kyle McCord can be. You can marvel at the final drive against Notre Dame. Here on this show, we discussed there were some highlights. And there were more lowlights during that drive than highlights on Kyle McCord. We can discuss other games against Penn State and against others. There were some highlights. There were also some plays and some series that weren't easy to watch. Rutgers tomorrow, defensively, brings in a really good defense. I say brings in, they're at home. But their defense is really good, and numbers stack up with some of the best defenses in the country. Rutgers is only allowing 15.8 points per game. That's 13th in the nation in FBS. They're only allowing 276.9 yards per game. That's number nine in FBS. And the best of them, pass defense, 156.3, second in the country. Ohio State's allowing 160.3 passing yards per game. One of the differences Rutgers schedule, if you look at their schedule, they really haven't played anybody up to the caliber. Only one school they played up to the caliber of Ohio State is Michigan. That was a loss. That was a loss to Michigan, a loss to Wisconsin. They haven't played a moment, Harrison Jr. If Abuka's ready tomorrow, they haven't played him. They haven't played a Cardinal Tate. They haven't played the receivers that are of the caliber of Ohio State. So even though the numbers are what they are, Northwestern, Temple, Virginia Tech, Wagner, Michigan State, IU, Indiana, Wisconsin, none of them are have the caliber of talent that Ohio State's bringing to Muscataway, New Jersey, tomorrow afternoon, 12 noon Eastern on CBS. A triple header on CBS. I believe there's Georgia, Missouri at 3.30, then 745 on CBS as well. It is LSU and Alabama, a definitely a game that I believe college football fans have been looking forward to all season long. Kyle McCord, expectations, maybe a slow start. I think ball security will be better. I don't expect to have multiple interceptions tomorrow in that game. But I also think we're getting closer into the part of the season where we're going to see Kyle McCord learn from the mistakes he's had this season and start to play better ball and be a better quarterback than he has throughout the previous eight games the Buckeyes have played this year. Earlier I said, this is a big test for Ohio State's offensive line, but didn't dive into that conversation. That's definitely something that I believe is a topic that we need to touch on because if the O-line plays well, the offense might break loose and expose some of the Rutgers defenders. But before we get to that conversation, this episode is brought to you by our friends at game time game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports music comedy and theater events near you with killer deals last minute deals with killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and the best price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets with zone deals you pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings and the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section in row for less game time will credit you 110% of the difference download the game time app create an account and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and use code Locked on college for a 
for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guarantee. The college football season, it's here. We're in the midst of it. And this season, Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live at 11 a.m. Eastern on every Locked On College YouTube channel. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, and go in-depth like only Locked On King, including insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team every day find locked on college football kickoff live every friday at 11 a.m eastern standard time on any locked on college youtube channel you won't want to miss it this game tomorrow against Rutgers is a little bit different than any Rutgers ohio state game i have covered since being here with the locked on podcast network normally Rutgers is a game you walk into it you roll into it no matter if it's in the shoe or in piscataway new jersey you know one thing Ohio State has better talent, and Ohio State should roll over them and embarrass them in that game. I remember one game, I think it was last year, we got a little finger pointed between Ryan Day and Greg Schiano, and I'm sitting here on the couch like, hey, I'm here for this. I like this. Two guys, I do believe, I don't know if they're friends, but I know they're at least cordial, used to work together in Columbus. Hey, at times, I think it was actually coming, I think that actually came, I remember it just started to work. I remember that play back then. I believe that was a fake punt. I believe it was a punt. I uh, forget the uh, punter's name, but ended up seeing a getting a look that he said, hey, if I get this look, I'm going to run it. He ran for the first down. It was in the fourth quarter. It was late in the game. Game was out of reach. Rutgers had no way of coming back. And Greg Schiano came across the field at Ryan Day, and they had a little finger pointing, went back and forth, and a little jawing. I like it. I love it. I love seeing coaches go after it and get after it and get in each other's faces and really just, hey, Show the emotion that fans want to see from them. The emotion and the passion. Those are two things we have seen from Ryan Day in this season. But Rutgers is going to do something a little bit different than other schools are going to. They're going to have a nose tackle in uh, number 92, Mayan Ahanatu. I hope I said that name correctly. Sitting at six foot four, 300 pounds. And normally what we have seen from Rutgers in the past, um, and we might see it again tomorrow, they might do a slanting nose tackle. Even though it might be a four-man front, they might do a – he might be pointed, um, say, um, in the A-gap, but more slanted at the center. And what does that do? It changes how you block and defend the – how you block and move the ball forward, no matter if it's a run a run play or a pass play, it might slightly change not so much the scheme of what you're trying to do, but the communication amongst the guys up front and the quarterback and the running back and everybody on the old line because something is a little bit different. Carson Hensman, Matthew Jones, Donovan Jackson, I am watching them. You also add in Aaron Lewis, who is that defensive end for Rutgers, who Greg Petuto mentioned a day ago during that show. You have to be ready. When the front seven is one of the best units and best sections of the team on Rutgers, not just best um, between the O-line and running backs or best unit on or just the O-line's great, the linebackers, no. But the front seven, when that's what's doing a lot of the damage for Rutgers' defense, you got to be ready, especially when at any given time, Rutgers knows they're overmatched. Their talent is in the best. And then when you add in that there are brothers, Desmond Igbenosin, who plays for Rutgers, and, De- and Davidson Igbenosin, who's at Ohio State, there might be some jawing saying, hey, man, look, I, Desmond, Desmond might say, hey, I know he, I know he can attack y'all offense. Davidson like, look, we got something special for you. The Desmond comes back and says, look, man, we have seen y'all play eight games. Y'all offense, y'all running game, it's not all that. And Davis is like, look, keep running your mouth. Keep running your mouth. You might catch one during the game. I'm like, catch one? What you mean? <laughs> You're going to see. I'm not saying they're going to fight during the game, but you might get a little embarrassed, uh, might get ran over. I don't know if that's going to happen. But I do think Ohio State's offense, especially on the heels of Henderson's performance a week ago, the offensive line is going to say, hey, look, we know what works. We've seen it work at a great clip consistently if Henderson's healthy and not just healthy there's one other thing you need to see from Henderson um that I do believe has is going to be pivotal to how the offensive line or how the offense moves to place tomorrow 
if he runs with the intent and purpose that he ran with a week ago, and you know going into that game that, hey, this guy, Henderson, is going to hit the hole. He knows where he is going. He knows how to counter. He is quick on his feet. His vision is drastically improved. Man, look. Rutgers might be in for a long Saturday afternoon and be exposed on CBS, a network that they don't normally play on. And I say that as Ohio State doesn't normally play on CBS. It's a great platform. Next year, 3.30 Eastern. Will they change the intro to the college football game on Saturday on CBS? I don't know. If they don't, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. One thing I do care about is playing on big platforms and new platforms, and CBS is one of those platforms that Ohio State and Rutgers will play on down the road. Side note, I just realized, and I haven't really gone back to my calendar to remember this. This is just, this is just off the top of the dome. I can't remember a season where Ohio State has not had a game on the Big Ten Network. First year, the NBC is calling Big Ten games. What do you have? Ohio State on the road at Purdue or on the Peacock on a streaming platform. Okay. You have, you've had Ohio State, Notre Dame on NBC. You had Ohio State, Wisconsin on NBC. You're going to have Ohio State, Michigan State a week from tomorrow on NBC. You've had week one against Indiana on CBS. You've had numerous games on Fox. I don't know if there's been an FS1 game, and I don't know if there's been a Big Ten Network game. Seems a little odd that that is reality, but that's the world that we are living in. Still, it's a possibility that Ohio State versus Minnesota, um, don't know the, is it the 18th? Let's go with the 18th. November 18th is on the Big Ten Network, but it's senior day, and it wouldn't shock me. Would not shock me at all if CBS tries to snag that game and say, hey, let's go ahead and make that maybe a 12 noon game for Ohio State and Minnesota on November 18th before the game against the Michigan Wolverines. Also, let's throw ahead, let's throw the Michigan conversation in here. It was recently a conference call on Wednesday. All the coaches were in there uh, discussing some uh, Big Ten issues and uh, just different details about the conference. It was a 90-minute call. Harbaugh was there. Harbaugh eventually left the call. And the other coaches, the other 13 coaches, urged and pushed the Big Ten Conference to bring down the hammer and to punish M Michigan for stealing signs. And I, from what I've read, the thought was, what are we waiting for? We know what they did. That's the coaches who have way are way more informed than you and I are. They know what's going on. And I guarantee you, I don't know this for sure, but I'd be shocked if there were no coaches in the Big Ten outside of the coaches at Michigan that knew what was going on. I something tells me, I mean, we heard Greg Schiano. Um, wouldn't shock me if Brian Day knew, if Mel Tucker knew before he got fired, if Pat Fitzgerald knew before he got fired, um, if uh, Matt Rule knew when he first got there and said, hey, something ain't right about what's going on. It wouldn't have shocked me if there were multiple coaches in the conference that knew about this, but there were, people know there was cheating that goes on. It doesn't get exposed. But now that what they knew is now exposed, and maybe more information than what they knew is now exposed, the Big Ten is can easily make a statement and say, look, we're not going to allow cheating in our conference, and what is the punishment? Maybe forfeiting the rest of the regular season games this year and no postseason for us in the Big Ten and no postseason for the CFP, or just say, hey, look, play all your regular season games. You can't not play in the Big Ten championship game because you cheated your way to get there. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I think there's enough evidence out there that's public evidence, not just a private evidence that is public to allow the Big Ten to say, Michigan. The Wolverine football team, you cannot play in the Big Ten championship game if you win the Big Ten East. If they do that, and then they start going back to see how far this thing has gone. <laughs> Imagine hearing Michigan uh, report coming out that the Wolverines had to pull down banners and um, had to strip themselves of wins because they cheated their way to get there. Just saying, this could easily be reality. You cheat. Don't be mad when the punishment comes your way. Coming up next, there has been a conversation that there's a trap game somewhere along the way for Ohio State. And some think the game tomorrow against Rutgers is a trap game. Do I buy into that belief and that thought? 
I'll answer that question next on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Price Picks. Price Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Price Picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. Price Picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of player stats and types are what make Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college and use code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for a first deposit match up to $100. Price picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Thank you for making Locked on Buck, guys, your first listen or first watch of every single day. Tomorrow, at the conclusion of Ohio State's game against Rutgers, we will be live right here at YouTube.com slash Locked on Buckeyes for another Locked on Buckeyes postcast. The first eight games of the season, the Buckeyes have, the postcast has come at the conclusion of a win. Will that be the case tomorrow? We will Know that tomorrow at the conclusion to the game. I think the Buckeyes will win. Not going to shy away from that fact. But win or lose, we will react to Ohio State's game tomorrow against Rutgers live on the Locked on Buckeyes YouTube page. Trap game. In the beginning of every season, everybody's looking at the schedule. Is this a trap game? Is that a trap game? Is this a trap game? Is that a trap game? And it's a conversation, and it might just be a conversation filler during a slow period in the offseason, but it also might be something to where the people asking the question truly believe and wonder, is there a trap game on the schedule for Ohio State? And I'm looking back, and I look over the schedule every single year, and um, the first thought might be, oh, well, how about you look at the game against Wisconsin after Penn State? It's on the road. It's in Camp Randall. The thought was Tanner Mordecai would be there. Chaz Malusi and Braylon Allen would be there in the backfield. Did you have that three-headed monster? Oh, wow. That might be a way to trap the Buckeyes. Or what about um, the game at Purdue? I remember a lot of people, a lot of people were pinpointing. and not saying this one person was saying this. After a bye week against Maryland, it's homecoming. Oh, Maryland's good. They got Talia. Talk about Loa. Oh, they got this. They got that. They got this. They got that. They got Mike Loxley. Could be. We saw how the game went 37 17. And realistically, um, the Buckeyes could have scored more points in that game. At Purdue, what was that? October 14th. The final score was 41 7. I saw, I heard people complaining about how the Buckeyes looked in that game. And I'm looking up there and I was there at the game and I'm like, 41 7. Not good conditions. It's on grass. It's wet. It's windy. Um, Rain came in different ways. What are we complaining about? 41-7 to win uh, on the road? What are we complaining about? But that was one of those games people said, oh, that might be be a trap game. It's before Penn State. It's on the road. It's at Purdue. West Lafayette could be a tricky place to play. Numerous Ohio State coaches have lost at Ross State Stadium over the past 50-plus years. And so that's just the case. And then there's a thought about Piscataway, New Jersey tomorrow at Rutgers. And before the season, the thought that I had was, no, Rutgers is trash. Why would you even ask that question? Is the Rutgers game a trap game? These are the thoughts that I had in my head that maybe didn't come out in the show, but here you go. Let's dive into Jay's head. Why in the world would you think Rutgers is a trap game? I understand it's back-to-back road games. I understand these athletes are between 18 to 22, maybe 23 years old. I understand it's hard to um, get them to get, sometimes get athletes to get emotionally up and invested for multiple games, especially on the road, New Jersey. Um, It's a travel. It's a team that's not really good. Why? Things in my head and going into the season, and even of late, because I've heard a lot of people ask if this is a trap game. 
if Ohio State's defense was not as good as it is and one of the best defenses in the country, I might buy into that thought. But no, I actually I don't think this is a trap game. I think, honestly, the trap game may have come a week ago if um, Wisconsin were healthy with Tanner Mordecai and with Chess Malusi. Even Braylon Allen went down the game. So you're using your backup quarterback and Braden Locke. And you're using your third string running back. Things just went the Buckeyes' way in that game as far as, unfortunately, the injuries went their way. I say that knowing JT Tomaloa went got hurt, came back in the game. Cabo Court, his ankle got uh, banged up again. Planting and knowing the ball was still a little bit difficult for him. Lathan Ransom's out, non-contact injury. Not sure uh, if he'll play tomorrow. I think he will not be avail- available on Saturday. and not sure how much time he will miss. But that was game, man. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, Camp Randall's a tough place to play, but to go in there, leave with the win, but also leave with injuries and guys getting banged up, that's not the way you want things to go. No, no, no. I don't think it's a trap game because Rutgers' offense is not that good. Ohio State's rush defense is really, really, really good. And a day ago, we talked about it. Kyle Manungai is the offense. 144 rushes, 744 rushing yards, 5.2 yards per carry, and seven touchdowns. The quarterback, Gavin Wimsett, 73 carries, 362 rushing yards, five yards of carry, seven touchdowns. So those two alone, I think, running the ball on the ground, that's the offense. Now, what Ohio State has done a whole lot better this year than they have over the past few is set the edge and and really contain any outside runs and any misdirection stuff that oppositions are going to try to run. Yes, occasionally it does trick them up. It's going to trick up even the best of defenses, which is what Ohio State is. They are definitely in that category this year. But if you force Rutgers to throw the ball, that's where things are definitely playing to the Buckeyes' hands. Gavin Wimsett has only completed 50% of his passes this season, 50.3% to be exact, 1,134 rushing yards, seven passing touchdowns, Excuse me, 1,134 passing yards, seven passing touchdowns, and four interceptions. He's not an amazing thrower of the football. And let's just say Ohio State gets up 14 points early, and they thought of Manon Guy and Wimsett running the ball goes out the window. He's playing right into the Buckeyes' hands. This could easily be a game. Or I said 34 to 9. I'm going to dial that back and say 34 to 6. My final prediction for tomorrow's game Buckeyes win. But I could easily see this game being a, a 45 6 game. Why? Defense. It wouldn't shock me if Iguanosa gets a pick, if Proctor gets a pick, if Chambers picks up a fumble and runs it back for a touchdown. I could easily see that happening. I might need to tweet that out. I don't normally do that, but uh, Proctor, INT, Iguanosa, INT, and then Chambers scoop and score. Writing it down as we speak because I don't want to forget that I made that prediction here on the show with you on this Friday, a day before. Another Buckeyes football game. What predictions do you have? Bold predictions or maybe a little bit tamer than bold? Leave them in the YouTube comments section below. Or you can share them. Tweet at me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. Remember, tomorrow we will be live right here on the Locked on Buckeyes YouTube page with another postcast at the conclusion of Ohio State's game tomorrow against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. In the meantime, subscribe to Locked on Buckeyes on YouTube. Hit that bell so you are notified every time we go live. Also, subscribe or follow on Apple or Spotify or whatever podcast app you listen and use on a daily basis. Leave a five-star review and a rating. It's a great, easy, free way to help more people come across the Locked on Buckeyes podcast. This has been Locked on Buckeyes here on a Friday. I'll see you next time.